All right, so a few of you that have been watching the channel might know that I have 40mm DCOE Chinese knockoff Webers on the Datsun at the moment. I've been chasing a bit of a fuel pressure gremlin, and so I've decided to step up to genuine Weber 45s. Here I'm changing out the velocity stacks so that they pass the brake cylinder. These are inch and a half stacks as opposed to the two and a half inch originals. Then after chatting with the Weber tech guys, I've decided to change out the 50 mil back bleed valve for a blank back bleed valve. Apparently this will help with air velocity across the jets when the vehicle's idling. The Weber guys also decided that it would be best if I went with a different main jet setup. So I'm going with a 130 main jet and a 190 air corrector. We're sticking with the uh, original F16 emulsion tubes, the original Venturis that come with this set, and everything else. Next of all, here's a little image of where I set the floats to. Be sure not to depress the ball valve on the pump jet whilst doing this. Finally, I needed a vacuum pickup for the distributor so I've simply brazed a piece of copper pipe into the end of one of the vacuum screws. I'm sure if people have lathes and all of those other fancy things they can do a nicer job but I simply used a drill bit the same size as the outside diameter of the copper tube and brazed it in making sure to seal the thread so that we would not have any vacuum leaks. The only thing to do now is to set up the linkage takeoff for the Webers. Obviously the Weber comes with the linkage set on one side and it was obviously the opposite side that I needed. So I simply swapped everything out to the spec that I needed. Making sure not to over torque nuts and to replace everything as it came off. Finally once they're tuned they will get dressed with these RAM air filters. They will get zip tied on, but I don't plan on running any oil on them. Obviously, because I already had a set of DCOEs on this, the Redline intake is already installed, and I'm using Weber Redline flexible couplings to mount the carburetors in place. These guys can be a little sensitive to pressure, so make sure you have your Nylock nut torqued up pretty well evenly across all four bolt positions. I got basically all this gear from Carburetors Unlimited and I will stick a link to all of the parts and their website in the description below. They're a great little mum and dad business and very well supported by Redline. I'm not getting any kickbacks or affiliate links from these guys but I do like the idea of helping them out. Next I made a simple little adapter for the throttle cable from the old original L16 carburetor and notched it so it can be bolted directly to the Weber and I simply mounted a bracket to the valve cover to put the springs on. This is a Redline linkage kit and it works beautifully. I know there's some other really flash ones out there but if you buy all the Redline stuff it all fits together nicely. Then it's simply a matter of connecting the fuel lines and the vacuum line to the distributor. As you can see the end of my dodgy little adapter sticking out of the top of the carburetor there. Next hurdle is to index the two carburetors. This will make sure that they're close to balance before starting the engine and you simply do this by removing the main cover that allows you to observe where the butterflies are and because this is on the car and difficult to get to I've simply cut a couple of pieces of guitar string and are using them as guides in the holes to position the butterflies. Then it's simply a matter of loosening the throttle linkage between the two carburetors and making sure that the wire is at the same tension between the two before tightening the linkage back up again.
and now for a quick tour of the fuel line we have a 5 16th line coming in from the fuel tank that has a coarse filter on it then it goes through this small German made pump and then into the fine filter then through a cheap pressure regulator for now and a pressure gauge and then into the carburetors. Now I'm ready to tune them and start the engine and this is where all hell breaks loose. Uh, it starts up nicely and things obviously need to be balanced and tuned but then I stick my air meter on it and bang it breaks basically within the first couple of seconds. So I will put a link on where to buy a good German one which I am still waiting for in the mail.